Hi everyone and welcome. In this review note, we are going to configure some base parameters on our Palo Alto firewall. Things we're going to do here is configure IP on each one of the firewall interfaces, as you can see in the schematic. We're going to enable routing so the firewall can forward traffic. And we're also going to configure a profile to allow us to ping the firewall. I'm just picking up from where we left off in the previous part of the exercise. If you exited out of the web interface into the firewall, you'll need to re-authenticate into that. First of all, let's get IP configured on our interfaces. To do that, we select the network tab and then select interfaces. We're using Ethernet 1, 2, and 3. I'm just going to click on Ethernet 1. We're going to put a comment in that is going to allow us to see generally what this interface is used for. And this one is the internet interface. We also need to specify that the interface type is layer 3. That's already selected for this particular interface. And I will pop into IPv4. It's going to be static. We'll add an IP address. Get that typed in. We'll say OK. And that is basically all we need to do for that. Notice that the IP address shows up here and the comment. Going to go ahead and do the same thing for Ethernet 2. Ethernet 2 is our internal connection. Again, layer 3, IPv4. We'll add an IP address. And we'll say OK. And then Ethernet 3 as well. This one is our DMZ. In this case, we have to change the interface type to layer 3, IPv4, static, add the address, and click OK. That is all we need to do to configure our interfaces as layer 3 and with IP applied. Next thing we need to do is configure the firewall so that it will actually route. To do that, I'm going to, again, under Network tab, I'm going to select Virtual Routers. There's already a default router, which is not really doing anything. We will use this and make some changes to it. First, I'm going to change the name. And I'm also going to add in the interfaces that we want to be included in this particular routing instance. So we'll add all three of the interfaces that we've configured. And the other thing we want to do is configure a default route for the firewall. Where we're going to do that is with static route. I'll add in a route. Firewall default gateway. Our destination will be what we normally use for default route. The exit interface is going to be Ethernet 1. And the next top IP will be that of our router. Say OK and OK. And that's all we need to do. So we can see that our virtual router here, these are the interfaces. We're not using any dynamic routing protocols, so none of that shows up. If we pop back and look at the interfaces, we'll be able to see that all three of our interfaces are attached to that virtual routing instance that we just created. Now, the other thing we need to do is segment our network into security zones. If I get under network, click on zones. We can see that we don't have any, so I will add in a new zone. This will be our internet zone. This is going to be a layer three type of zone. I'm going to add in ethernet one, which is the interface connecting to the internet. And that's all I need to do at this point in time. So let me click okay. 
going to do the same thing and add two more zones for DMZ and for internal. Name is internal, again, layer three. This will be Ethernet two for the interface. Click OK. And finally, we'll do another zone for DMZ. Once again, layer three, and this will be Ethernet three for the interface. If we want to see the effect on that, we can pop back to the interfaces very quickly. And we can see that for Ethernet one, the security zone is internet. Ethernet 2, security zone's internal, and Ethernet 3, the security zone is DMZ. And that's all we need to do to set up the zones. Now, at this point in time, we might say, well, can we ping internally or even externally onto those interfaces? Let me switch over here onto BM2. That's the one that's connected to our internal zone, which is where we would normally be expecting to be able to ping. Punch in a command to be able to do that. And we will see that the command is going to time out and fail. And the reason for that, of course, is that we have not configured the firewall to respond to any traffic yet. So like any good firewall out of the box, it's going to do absolutely nothing with respect to either forwarding or responding to network traffic. So let's fix that up. We're gonna come back to my firewall and what we're going to do is configure uh, profile for the management interface. Again, under network, network profiles, I'm going to click on interface management. Again, I don't have any profiles at this point in time, so I'm going to create one. We're going to call this allow ping. And under the services we're going to allow, we're only going to select ping. That's it. Notice that we can also specify permitted IP addresses here. We're not going to bother with that, but as you can see, we can get to be fairly sophisticated with this type of a profile. Click OK. And now I need to apply that to my interface. So I'm going to go back to interfaces. We'll select our internal interface. And I'm going to switch to the advanced tab and under management profile, I'm going to select allow ping from the dropdown. Click OK. And we need to commit this so that it's going to be in effect. So click commit and commit. We'll wait for that to finish. And once it does, we'll come back and test our ping. OK, excellent. That's finished. Let's go back over to our VM, and we can now successfully ping our firewall from our workstation. So wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.